Hey guys, it's your girl Booney, and you're listening to episode 119 of the Booney Breakdown podcast, your source for all things responsible and ratchet. Welcome to this week's episode, guys. I'm so excited. Our favorite astrologer is back as the guest. That's right. Mecca Woods is here. She is the official. I always deem her the official astrologer of the Booney Breakdown podcast. You know, if you're new to the podcast, you have not listened to any of the other episodes with Mecca. I encourage you to go back and listen to them. I will link them in the show notes. But she's the real deal. She's been featured in Bustle, Essence, Terra.com, Pop Sugar. She's even been on TLC, on a show on TLC, Refinery29, all of that great stuff. She knows her stuff. So in this episode, I really got to ask Mecca her thoughts on the new trend in the astrology apps, the pattern, co-star, what are some things we should look forward to as we move into 2020? And for those of you who are still not sure about this astrology game, we do a one-on-one, a quick astrology one-on-one. So stick around for that conversation. Guys, I'm going to skip past um, our pick of the week this week because, because it's really good reason. Um, Facebook memories brought up something to my attention. And so I want to do a really quick, um, I don't know if it's going to be quick, but I'm going to squeeze in here a short little story time with Booney. It has been um, a while and I had totally forgotten about this, but it popped up on my Facebook. And on November 22nd, 2007, at 10.38 p.m., I wrote... Thanksgiving 2007 will go down in the books as the day my grandfather was shot. A true lesson in being thankful. Thank God my grandfather is safe. And so I shared that in my Insta story. And I was just like, whoo, shit, time flies. Two, pop up is a G. Three, I'll never forget that morning. And so I got so many messages where people were like, wait, what, for real? Like, are you joking? Like, no, I am not joking. And so I told people like, maybe I'll tell the story in the podcast. So here I am. We're skipping Booney's pick of the week because we're getting a short story time with Booney. So that means our intro is going to be a little longer than necessary, but the conversation with Mecca will be coming. So this at the time I still live with my mom and my brother and what am I, so 2007 I'm probably like 22 years old and we're on the phone with my grandmother so she calls and we used to could tell time by the, <laughs> the way my grandmother called us we're like oh all right it's 10 o'clock so she's calling and she's talking to my mom and she's telling us like what time to come over for Thanksgiving dinner and in hindsight looking back that was probably like one of the last Thanksgivings that my grandmother cooked before she got sick and things started going awry and we didn't know what was going on. But this is probably one of the last good Thanksgivings um, that she cooked. And we're on the phone and she's like, all right, well, I'm going to see y'all at five. Come over at five. And she's like, oh, I heard a noise. Let me go check on Frank. <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Now, mind you, the whole time that we're on the phone with my grandmother, Pop Pop is out back washing his car and Pop Pop had just got maybe not even a month ago, like a brand new, I think it was like a 2008 Ford Taurus. And you know how black men are with their cars. He's out back washing the car on Thanksgiving in the cold. Yes. And vacuuming. And while he's out back, my grandmother hears this noise and she's like, oh my God, let me check on Frank. So she gets up, goes into the kitchen and Pop Pop is coming into the house with this strange man and she doesn't know who the man is and she looks down and pop pop is bloody and she's like oh my god like what the hell at the same time that's happening oh then she um calls 911 so at the same time that's happening my uncle is um a retired member of the Baltimore Police Department and he is at home and he was on the phone with my mom and I and, and my grandmother getting the plans. And so he hears it comes across his police scanner radio, he, granny's address, and adult gunshot victim. And he's like, what the hell? So we get a call back from my uncle. 
And my uncle's like, y'all, I think Pop Pop got shot. <laughs> and we're like, what the fuck? And he's like, yeah, it just came across the police scanner. We're like, oh, my God. Like, Granny said, like, she heard a noise. She was going to go check on Frank. We're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So it is cold. And I remember I had on, like, a wife beater and shorts. I think I threw on some sweatpants. And we just hopped in the car and started driving to my grandmother's house. And when we pull up on the block, it was police cars everywhere ambulance Uh, we were just like what is going on they let us through we're like that's our family that's our family and then my uncle had also made the call to you know the precinct like that's that's a officer's family so it's tons of cops there we get they wouldn't let us in the house because the house is a crime scene we're like where's pop pop granny's like they took him out of here in the ambulance she had called his other children um from his first marriage they were going to meet him at the hospital but we had come there uncle robert's like okay y'all got this under control i'm going to the hospital and y'all stay here with granny we're like oh my god i mean my grandmother has blood on her it's i mean it's just blood everywhere so we're just like oh my god so as we found out what happened in the alley was pop pop's washing the car And he said, like, this boy, well, a young boy walked up on him and says, oh, do you have any money? So Pop Pop says, no, 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 no. I don't have no money. Keep washing the car. So he says, maybe not like a minute or a couple minutes later, the boy comes back, but he's with another guy. And they're like, empty out your pockets. Now, they ran up on the wrong old man. (laughs) And Pop Pop is like, are you crazy? Like, absolutely not like no and they pulled out a gun and any rational person i don't think he had his wallet on him i don't remember him saying that but he had his cell phone i think he had some cash in his pocket and he said no when he saw the gun like oh no 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 no, no. they're not gonna kill me pop pop grabs the gun and in the struggle with the the gun over the fight over the gun that's when the gun went off. So when Pop Pop starts fighting the one guy for the gun, the other guy left. He just took the cell phone and left. Pop Pop's cell phone on his pocket and left. So the other guy, Pop Pop's like, they're fighting. They're struggling over the phone. They're struggling over the phone. And it was like, pop. That's the sound my grandmother heard when she's on the phone was the gunshot. And another neighbor who happened to be cooking Thanksgiving dinner was in the kitchen, heard it. And sent her husband out there to help Pop-Pop. That was the man who was carrying Pop-Pop in up the steps off the porch into the house to Granny. And Granny's like, when she comes into the house, they sit Pop-Pop down at the dining room table. She picks up the phone to call 911 and Pop-Pop drops the gun on the table. So this, at the time Pop-Pop of this happening, Pop-Pop was 74 years old. (laughs) And the boys were 16 and 17, respectively. They actually ended up catching them, going to jail, et cetera, et cetera. And when Pop Pop was able to wrestle away a gun from two teenage boys, and he did get shot in the leg. He survived, went to the hospital. They pretty much was like where the bullet was. They weren't going to remove it. They cleaned, infected it, gave him a tetanus shot. Pretty much was like the bullet eventually will work itself out the tissue and it's going to fall out. So (laughs) that was my Thanksgiving 2007. It was just insane, insane. And what a story to be thankful for. And I know in an episode with Kenny, I had mentioned um, that I used to have this, this news clip on the, um, on my DVR of my grandmother from this interview of after pop pop got shot because it was such a news story. Like a 74 year old man is shot on Thanksgiving morning, washing his car. And so that was the news clip that I was talking about that I was devastated when it was deleted. And so as we are in Thanksgiving week and we are celebrating and hopefully you're getting to spend time with your family and your friends and your loved ones, there is so much to be thankful for. And I look back on that memory, like, God, like that could have been gone so many different ways. Pop Pop could not still be here. And yeah, so what a story. That is the story. The Thanksgiving of 2007, 
when Pop Pop was shot. So I hope this uh, Boonie <laughs> story time with Boonie was worth the long intro. Unfortunately, I have to move on. We do have some housekeeping feedback from last week's episode with Brian of Beyond Be More. You guys loved it. Someone said it was their favorite episode, one of their favorite episodes. They were so thankful that I talked about travel and they too agreed um, with my thoughts, our thoughts on Dubai. So Glad you guys listened to it as you're planning your 2020s, your travel plans. Be sure to check out that episode if you haven't already. Uh, We know it is coming up on Black Friday. So if you use the code BLACK, you will save 25% on all of your Boonie Breakdown merch on orders over $20. Head on over to booniebreakdown.com backslash shop. Also released and linked in the show notes is Boonie's Black Friday Shopping Guide. If you want to spend your coin this holiday season with some great black businesses, I encourage you to do so with that list. And lastly, um, mark your calendars. There are three episodes left in season six of the Boonie Breakdown podcast. That's it. Three episodes. I'm excited. You guys can start sending topics and guest suggestions uh, for season seven. And season seven will start on February 10th. So... I know this is longer than our normal intro, but I thought it was a worthy story for a story time at Booney in this week of Thanksgiving. So that is it for me. So let's get ready to break it down. Hey guys, it's your girl Booney, and I'm excited because I, I've always said that this guest is the official astrologer of the Booney Breakdown podcast. I believe you've been coming on the podcast. I think it was like your first episode was episode five. <laughs> and yeah. This is probably going to be like episode 120, probably. So welcome back, Mecca. Hey, <laughs> hey I'm happy you? to be back. Yeah, look, she look, she done blown up, y'all. She been on all the big boy podcasts. She been on TV. She done dropped some books. <laughs> I, I've been hustling out here. I've been hustling, y'all. I see you. I see you. Um, speaking of, we're gonna plug your book first because even before I had sent you the email to come back on, mm-hmm. I had pulled your book back out because I am single oh. again. <laughs> and um I remember in your book so astrology for happiness and success you did the daily affirmations for love so if yeah. you have not gotten a book I really recommend that you do um and it's for each each um sign their daily affirmations for love and so I just wanted to read to so people could be like oh let me I'm gonna get to so my like I'm a Sagittarius because we're B dates we're B day twins. Yes. If you did not know that, Mac and I have the same birthday. Yay. And by the time this airs, it'll be SAG season, the best season there is. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I have one, two. It's seven affirmations for the Sagittarius sign in this book. And so the two that speak to me the most, mm. I am capable of having a relationship that is stable and emotionally satisfying yes and the other one (laughs) the right relationship for me is as passionate and sexually fulfilling as it is real substantial and deeply intimate and so i feel like that is the plague of being a sagittarius (laughs) (laughs) i go yeah yeah i moved in the extremes Mm, mm, mm. shocker (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that's what we do. You know, Sag is, we're all about, like, following, you know, our heart, you know. And we, I mean, you know, just being a fire sign means that, you know, you're very passionate and just kind of, you know, ready to jump into anything, including a relationship. <laughs> and so, I mean, that, I mean, but that's what, what, you know, a part of, like, what, a part of like our attraction and like our allure is because you know the people that do tend to be attracted to us they're attracted to us because we are adventurous you know because we are um you know full of life and just ready to kind of get out there and see what the world has to offer and so we need someone who 
not only share some of that, like, you know, um, joie de vivre, if, if you will, but mm-hmm. they also, um, they, you know, they give us that freedom, but don't get like discouraged or like threatened by it, you know? And I think that's kind of like where some of the friction tends to come, you know, for, for like yes. sad, sad women. Um, or even just like fire sign women, like Leo, like Aries, it's just like trying to find that, that balance between, you know, having that freedom and that independence, but still having someone who is in the, you know, in our corner. Yeah. And and that is uh, critical for me. So as I was thinking like, okay, I'm ready to, I have to be intentional again. And I was like, oh my God, you, those were like, I don't even have to start from scratch when I remember when I first read your book and I read those affirmations, I was mm. like, "Woo!" <laughs> so yes, I pulled the book back out and I was like, you're going to get back into the daily habit of this. So, cause they really did speak to what I, I do want. Like I, I know, I know what I do. I know my mistakes. <laughs> I have self-awareness. So, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, and that's also too, like what it means to be a Sag is like gain that wisdom. So yeah, yeah. it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be, we'll make it right. Yes. <laughs> um, so I had asked listeners, like they told them that you were coming on and I noticed a trend in some of the questions. So I didn't want to ask like direct questions, but a lot of the questions were like an astrology 101. So I know I want to get there, but I kind of feel like what sparked all of this is the new trend in the very popular apps, um, in particular, CoStar Astrology and Mm -hmm. the Pattern. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so I was just curious as an astrologer, like, what are your thoughts about those particular apps? Um, I think... I well, uh, you know, <laughs> I kind of I have mixed feelings about the about the apps. I think I think apps can be great in terms of like introducing people to astrology because I think a lot of people um up until this point weren't aware of like how much there is to astrology in terms of like a birth chart and what all that stuff means. Um mm-hmm. so I think the apps can be kind of like an in- introductory sort of okay. exposure, you know, to like what your chart means and things of that nature. However, um, I also have some concern over people being too reliant on apps because, you know, sometimes I'll notice that like people will talk about like on Twitter, for example, like some of the notifications that they get from like CoStar or Pattern and it kind of like might tell them something negative or, you know, Mm -hmm. might say something that might be a bit discouraging and people will really, you know, take that stuff to heart. And so, you know, I, I'm always trying to encourage people. Like, it, it's it's cool, like, the, the memes and things like that that we see, like, on, on social media and stuff like that. Those, <laughs> those, those can be fun, right? But when it starts to get to a point where it really makes you feel bad about yourself or feel bad about, you know, your birth chart or whatever, then that's when I feel like you kind of have to be really careful with it. Because astrology shouldn't, it should educate you. It should be... A, a, a tool that you can use to make, you know, realistic choices or to kind of like, uh, to be, how can I put it? Like, you know, it, it can, it can tell you the real deal about things that might not always be so like warm and fuzzy, but it should do it in a way that is encouraging and educational and that can show you, like, if you are going through a, a difficult time, whatever, it can, sh- it should be able to show you like how to, how to navigate that you know, and and be like supportive and encouraging. And so I think sometimes with the apps, because you're not talking to like a real astrologer and even though they, you know, they have, um, well, I think, I don't know who works with the pattern, but I think maybe CoStar does. I don't know. I don't want to give wrong information, but I know that sometimes with some of the astrology information that does go out, they don't always have trained astrologers working for them. And gotcha, so okay. that can also be a, that can also be like a, um, a place where there can be a lot of misinformation and kind of like confusion because it's very different from sitting across from an astrologer or, sit, you know, being on the phone with them or whatever, and having a real life person talk to you about your chart where you can ask questions or whatever, versus like pulling something up on an app or, you know, even like looking online for things about your chart. So 
you know, I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I think it can be cool and I think it can be fun, but I also suggest that people not take all of that things that are said via apps or social media or whatever too, too much to heart. heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know the the apps, like, you know, I started with the pattern. I I can't believe, I can't remember who, like, suggested it to me. Mm-hmm. The pattern is really, um, sometimes, um, what's the word, like, it's really mystified a bit. It's mm-hmm. like, you can read into it a lot of different things, right? Like, right. Well, like, you can with anything, but, um, but I do know in CoStar, <laughs> like, I turn off notifications for all apps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't get those pop-ups that you always see go viral. It's like, drag me then. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. CoStar really does come for you sometimes. They have like... Mm-hmm. The little, yeah, yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen examples. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh shit. And so I I just read an article um, where it was talking about, it was telling people with, and it was talking about CoStar in particular. And it was saying how like they were telling people don't look at it first thing in the morning because people were letting it dictate their mood for the rest of the day Mm, because it was like mm -hmm. today you're in a horrible mood stay away from and so it's like it set that intention for the day we're in a hard i'm in a horrible mood so i'm gonna act like shit and feel like trash all day long (laughs) right yeah 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 yeah. that 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 yeah that's very Ooh, that's a lot yeah yeah and so i know for me like i don't go in like i'll go in it every now and then like oh, i wonder what it says like just based off of how my energy is mm-hmm. and sometimes it's like oh yeah that's like you say like that's kind of spot on and then sometimes i'm like oh i don't feel that way but mm-hmm. i'm just not somebody who um harps on that kind of stuff as like the golden word so right yeah yeah but what i will say as we move into this astrology um 101 is I will say in CoStar, as we start to move into this next conversation, it does break down all of those things you see and all of the memes and stuff. I'm this moon and that sun. So if, you, if you've never done your chart, your birth chart, if you answer the few questions in, the, in that app particularly, they have it saved for you. So you can always go back and reference it really easy. So that's my one plug for that. But... Now with that said, <laughs> <laughs> Astrology 101, we're going to take you back. If you um, are, this is your first time listening to Mecca on the podcast, I'll be sure to go back and in the show notes, I will list all of the episodes that she's appeared on. I believe this is our fifth or sixth time on the podcast. I, I think. think, yeah, I think number five. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you can go back and listen to some of the other information. It always stays true if you feel like, because we're not going to touch on everything in this episode. We've done it before. So I just want to let everyone know that you can just go back and reference those episodes. But yes, because of this new trend, and I feel like astrology is so in, especially on Instagram, um, a lot of people, I got a lot of questions. How do you know your sun and your moon signs? Okay, so um, if you want to find out your moon sign, you can, there's like two websites that I, I recommend people can go to, or you can, you know, you can use an app like um, Time Passages or uh, Ooh, or CoStar, know. you know, if, if people want to. But the, the, the moon sign is based, basically based on like the day that you were born. Mm-hmm. Um and sometimes it has to do with the time because like the moon changes signs every two and a half days so sometimes you know you can have like the moon changing signs on a particular day so that's why it's always good to know like exactly what time that you were born but if you can get Mm -hmm. your time of birth you know your location of birth and you know you have like your regular birth date information you can go to a website like astro.com um, there's also another website called astrocharts.com and you can plug in that information and it'll give you your chart for free and it'll tell you what your placements are, including your sun and your moon signs. Got it. Yeah, I I'm I was sitting here writing down those websites. <laughs> <laughs> um so when you so when you get your chart, what else does your chart tell you just besides your your moon and your sun signs? Um, so it'll tell you your rising sign or your ascendant. 
Um, and so like oftentimes like when we talk about like astrology one-on-one stuff, um, people always will try to find out or or at the very least know like what their sun, their moon, their rising sign is. So those okay. those three pieces of the chart um are always like like the top things that people know because your sun is your identity and like the way that you want to shine in the world. Um, especially when it comes to the things that make you special. Uh, your moon has to do with like your emotions and how you process them and um, like the connection that you have to like home and family and like your emotional comfort and security. And then your rising sign, which is also known as the ascendant, has to do with like how you present to the world, like physically, you know, in terms of like your style of dress, the way that you look physically, um, the way that you sort of want people to see you. And it's also like the first impression that people get when they, when they meet you and then they get like the sun and then they get the moon and blah, blah, blah. But um, the ascendant also has to do with like how you approach the world as well. Mm. So those are like okay. the top, the top three, but there's other parts of the chart, like your Venus sign, which is love and you know relationships and values. There's Mars in terms of like how you fight. Um, there's Mercury, you know, in terms of how you communicate. <laughs> and then it goes all down the line, like Jupiter, Saturn, you know, Uranus, Pluto, et cetera, et cetera, Neptune. Gotcha. Yeah. And the next thing too, because I know this comes up a lot when people are starting to read things and they dig a little deeper, mm-hmm. when it says your ruling planet, where right. would people get that information from? So your ruling planet is basically the planet that is in charge of your zodiac sign so for example sagittarius um our our ruling planet is jupiter so if you if i mean you could just kind of google that that's like a a very easy thing to google um it'll tell you what your ruling so you like ruling planet of gemini you know is mercury or ruling planet Mm -hmm. of pisces um i i say jupiter because i know some a lot you'll see some some things that say like neptune um, but I say Jupiter because that's the traditional ruler, just like the gotcha. traditional ruler of Scorpio is Mars and not Pluto. Um, but yeah, but the 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 planetary ruler is basically the planet that's in charge of your zodiac sign. Got it. Yeah. So you can just Google that, folks. That one's the easy one. Mm-hmm. When we're talking in the chart, still, I think this is our last chart question. Mm-hmm. What does it mean when people say house? I see that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so the houses of a birth chart, there's 12 of them. And the way that the, the chart, your birth chart is configured is basically like a map of the sky. So as the planets are moving through the 12 houses, like, I mean, like your, 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 your planets that were to, you know, aligned at your birth, those don't move, but as the planets continue to move, you know, like, you know, they, they move around the chart and that's what helps to inform like different experiences and challenges and opportunities and things of that nature. But each of the 12 houses basically have to do, you can just think of them as housing different areas of your life or different facets of who you are. So like if someone is talking about the second house, for example, they're talking about like, how like where where you house or like sort of like where um the part of your life is that has to do with like your money your values your possessions the seventh house that's like housing like you know your relationships and you know your partnerships and um you know how you you sort of interact with other people the tenth house you know tenth house would be like you know, your career. So anything happening in the 10th house would always have to do with like career related stuff. So that it just represents like different areas, you know, of, of your life and what's happening in those areas. Got it. So that's pretty like a complex, that's more complex than just knowing, you know, your sun, moon and rising. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's all that is. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> it was like panic with that question because they sent it to me in like a video. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, because people don't like what is what is this? Right. Yeah, like what is this? And it's so funny because I like I responded back like I know for me I'm a Sagittarius sun sign. Mm-hmm. I'm a Virgo moon and I'm a Libra rising. Mm-hmm. 
that is it. Like, I know where my other placements are. Like, right. I know Aquarius is my Venus and Mars. That's where I stop. I don't go into the houses. I'll read about it, but I'm not like <laughs> I'm not out here like I won't converse about it. But uh yeah, I can I can flip you down about my my sag Virgo Libra. <laughs> well that's I mean that's I mean that's good. That's that's good enough. Like some people don't know much about that. So what are yours? I forgot. What are your three? I, I'm a Sagittarius sun a Aquarius moon and a Leo rising. Okay. Ooh, yeah. two fires. Yes. <laughs> Very fiery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought I, it was funny because it's, I know someone who was like, we're like the inverse. Like she's like Libra sun. I think she's a Virgo rising and a Sagittarius moon. Mm, mm, okay. And I was like, Oh my God. I was like, we're like a mesh of like a, a mesh of each other somehow. Yeah, I have a friend, um, a friend that's kind of like that. She's an Aquarius sun, but a sa- uh, Sag rising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I was like, oh, we're like the same. <laughs> I got another question. I had two more, actually. The one was very specific. <laughs> very specific. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to read the question and then I'm going to do an answer, but then I'm going to let Mecca answer too. Will I find love? <laughs> birthday july 3rd age 37 and so my answer would be mecca does personal readings <laughs> <laughs> i think she'll need a little bit more information and you can go to our website and and do all of that but i'm gonna let mecca answer <laughs> <laughs> um well the, the short the short answer to that is is yes. I think I think anybody can find love. I, I don't I don't think that like when we talk about astrology, it's not about like will you find love, will you not? Are you doomed, you know, to like a life of like loneliness and, you know, failure and those kinds of things. The astrology is really there to show you like what the blockage might be to you getting mm-hmm. love and like how you can turn it around so you can actually get that partnership or that relationship that you want. So for cancers right now in particular, um, cancers are going through a big transition because cancers can sometimes be a little too um, giving and a little too open, you know, when it comes to partners and a little too clingy, right? Sometimes p- cancers have a really hard time. Very with letting emotional pe- people. Right. Very, very <laughs> emotional, but very, also very tender and very warm and very thoughtful of others as well. But sometimes their fear of loneliness can make them cling to partners that aren't really good for them. And so cancers right now are learning how to embrace their individuality and embrace their singlehood and recognize that being alone doesn't necessarily mean being lonely. That's very like it's very two two very different it's concepts. Very different, yes. And so cancers, there's um there's a big eclipse happening next year on in January. Eclipses mark change and like, you know, new opportunities and you know, just they're they're game changers. So that eclipse that's happening Next, actually, two of them, two of them in Cancer, one in January and then another one in uh, July. Those eclipses are really going to be pushing Cancers to, like I said, to kind of go after things that allow them to shine and kind of like step out into the limelight or step out into the spotlight. That, and like I said, embracing their gifts, embracing their individuality. And it's like once you're able to get comfortable with shining on your own and kind of embracing that spotlight and embracing yourself it would allow you to attract a partner who would do the same thing. I like that. I like how you're saying to like, you know, astrology is a tool and it's just not this, you know, overarching being that is going to dictate how exactly how our life is going to go. Right. Um, yeah. And I know I, I, I'm guilty of it too, like reading the horoscopes, but I have a thing where, not always like I read your horoscopes but like monthly horoscopes I tend to try to read them at the end of the month sometimes because Mm. (laughs) I do feel like if it's something good then I'm sitting here like 
like I'm waiting mm-hmm. versus kind of just living. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So I've noticed that about myself. So yeah, I say the same thing. Like when people who are using it for compatibility, I'm just like the meme. I will ask a guy his birthday and, and time he was born. <laughs> <laughs> and I get upset when they don't know what time they're born. And I'm like, can you text your mom? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm totally that girl because I will pull up. Oh, th- and then I will be on. I found some website and it's probably so, it's probably so old because it looks like a GeoCity site. Remember GeoCity? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'll be like, Sagittarius woman, Aquarius man, compatibility. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm totally that girl. So I get it. I do it too, but yeah, I don't let I, it. Yeah, I think, I think it's important for people to recognize that there's some work or effort that needs to be done on our behalf in order to... um co-create with the universe or even just kind of take advantage of opportunities that the universe might be presenting with us. And I always like to use the example of like a person that might come to me about like a love, you know, wanting love. And I could be like, Hey, you know, March, April, wow. You know, love is going to really be sparkling for you. You know, this is a time Mm -hmm. where you could really meet someone, but unless that person is, going to be out and socializing and like actually, you know, putting themselves in spaces where they can actually meet someone, it's not going to happen. Like if you're going to be on your couch, you know, the whole time, exactly. you know, like then there's nothing that that planetary energy can do to kind of help, you know, to kind of like usher in that love or usher in that relationship. So that's why, you know, I'm, I'm very, very adamant about telling folks that like, yes, astrology can predict things and kind of show like what the trends are and like, you know, sort of like where we're headed and et cetera, et cetera. But we, it's a tool at the end of the day, it's a tool. Either you're going to use it and apply it and make it work or you're not. Yeah. Just see if, like you use everything else. It's just another tool in the tool shed. Um, yeah. Cause the other question was this person, they're more adept. And I think the answer we just said, um, you know, can apply to them, but they had a little bit more specific, like specific identifying information. They just said, I'm a Pisces sun and moon cancer rising. Mm. I've dated Sagittarius as Libras and Capricorns. They're all trash. Oh. <laughs> Who should I be dating? <laughs> well, well, I- look, if we add, I'm, you know, I go on the mountain that Gemini men are trash. <laughs> <laughs> I will always stand on that mountain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, anybody who's been following me for a while will always know that I'm forever talking about my my trials and tribulations with Scorpio men. So, which, <laughs> which, which, you know, I don't, I don't even like, I don't, I don't even really have like a big issue with Scorpio men now because I've learned, you know, the lessons that they were trying to teach me. But, um. Yeah, you know, I feel like this is another one of those questions where people are probably going to hate me for because there's no cut, 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 dry answer to it. Like when it comes to dating, um, and as and as a matter of fact, I wrote an article about this. But when we find ourselves attracting the same sign over and over and over again, it's because that sign represents something that's already within us that we either need to acknowledge and embrace, or we need to um work on like like transforming or or changing somehow. So if you're a triple water sign and you're attracting, was it Capricorns? I mean, Capricorns are earth signs and they're very much about like stability and being on top of your game. And like Capricorns can, like they get pegged as being cold, but they know how to put their emotions aside to get shit done. So Mm. if you're attracting a Capricorn and they might be like too like overbearing or too cold, it's probably because they're trying to get you to be a little bit more detached, you know, or, or maybe trying to show you where you need to be a little bit more disciplined. So sometimes, so it's kind of like, you know what I mean? So like if, if you're attracting a sign that rubs you wrong or, and it's, it's happening over and over again. Um, like I said, it's because they're trying to get, there's something that sign has to teach you that you need to embrace into your own life. And once you do it, it might not necessarily mean that you'll completely stop attracting that sign, 
but it means that it will help you to grow because that's what relationships are designed to do. They're designed to help us grow and to become more self-aware. Um, so whenever people ask me, okay, well, what sign should I be dating? I always tell people any sign can go with any sign, right? They're, you know, like I, I never want to tell people like, oh, stay away from that sign or whatever, whatever, because all signs bring growth. All signs, you know, um, can bring love and, and et cetera, et cetera. All signs lie. All signs can cheat. Like all signs, there's no one sign that has like the monopoly on like the bad habits or the bad traits, right? It's just different ways that we can do things that might, you know, piss each other off. But mm. be open. You know, I always tell people like be open to, 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 um, you know, to, to different signs be, it might, it might take like some signs might take a little bit more practice or a little bit more care or thoughtfulness for things to work. But it really depends on the maturity of the people that's involved. You know what I mean? Like it it depends on like, right. You know, it depends on like the maturity and the communication and like the respect for one another, like all that plays a role. And so yeah, I always tell people like that. Don't get too hung up on the signs. You know, just think about like you know what can this person teach me? What 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 am I here to learn? And be being being open to that. And I think that you can have a different relationship experience. I love that answer. <laughs> I really do. I'm si- I'm sitting here like writing. I write notes too, but um, <laughs> yeah, I I. I try, like, again, with everything I do, I read it for the insight, but I really try, like, to be open enough so it's not dictating or dictating how I move, if that makes sense. Like, finding that balance of using the information that you get from the these tools, mm. but then finding a way to make it work, right, in practicality. Mm, mm. Yeah, but I, I know I... I'll be falling down rabbit holes like some I will have like all right I'll read your monthlies on bustle I'll read um the astro twins their monthly Mm -hmm. I'll read it's another one cafe astrology Mm -hmm. yeah I read there like (laughs) I used to read Susan Miller all like I used to be like all right it is October 31st, and now I'm going to post up and read nine monthly horoscopes. <laughs> I'm not that bad anymore, but I, I do still read them. So, All right, I feel like our last, not our last thing, but we have not talked about the dreaded, and I feel like this is probably one of the most popular things on Instagram about astrology retrograde and okay. the only one that gets the rap and the fame is mercury <laughs> right right right, right. <laughs> so we're in retrograde right now as we're recording this uh, mercury yeah. retrograde but can you just explain what that means and then why does mercury get the bad rap okay so um anytime a planet is retrograde it just means it's like retro like we're going backwards we're going into the past right and um, Mercury retrograde in particular, because Mercury is one of the fastest moving planets. Um, and, and it also very, it travels also very closely to the sun. Mercury, like it, it'll, it'll move past the sun, but it has to bounce back. And so like, in astrological terms, it's kind of like Mercury is going to gather information and then bring it back to kind of like, let us know like what, what he found. And so when we talk about like Mercury retrograde, it's usually a time of like revisiting the past and like looking at things um, from a different angle and kind of like um, anything that has to do with like revisions, you know, uh, reevaluation, you know, anything just like retro. So that's usually a time when, you know, you hear from your exes, you know, people get (laughs) their exes come come calling, (laughs) you know. Um, there's usually a time where you hear from people from the past. It doesn't always necessarily have to be next. It could be like an old friend or family member or something that you lost touch with. And like, you know, people come back from the past or like things that, um, one, one example. So my daughter had lost one of her AirPods and this was pre Mercury retrograde. And we ended up finding it 
<laughs> during Mercury retrograde. So like sometimes Mercury would ret- <laughs> return things to you that you lost, right? Um, yeah. On a very or and on a very physical sense, but then you know, bring things will also break down, right? Because Mercury has to do with communication. So like you know, mm-hmm. phones and you know, laptops and cars and anything that's like designed to like get us like to connect us with other people or get us like from point A to point B, a lot of those things tend to get very glitchy or weird around Mercury retrograde because the idea is not to like be moving full speed ahead. It's supposed to be a time of slowing down and and kind of looking at things before you take action and kind of like, you know, kind of like, um, kind of like chewing, like, you know, kind of um, assessing things Oh, before yeah. you do before you do it so like when it comes to like you know miss like text messages or missed emails or things like that that's usually a side effect of the mercury retrograde but it's designed to help us to slow down and kind of look at things from a different angle got it yeah i i am I, you know this episode is going to come out after my live show in atlanta but i know we're in retrograde and I have thought of ways to take precautions. Like, okay, if this goes wrong, then I have it backed up here. If <laughs> if that doesn't work, then I have it on this flash drive. Okay, if that doesn't work, I also put it in the cloud so I can pull it from anywhere. <laughs> so I've, like, taken the precautions just of knowing, like, things can get a little haywire. Yeah, Technology yeah. can break down on you sometimes. Right, yeah. And communication can break down and stuff like that. And that's also kind of the thing, too, of, like, just kind of learn, like, staying adaptable, you know, and kind of just rolling with the punches. I mean, sometimes it can be a situation where maybe you do, like, have a backup or whatever, and that still might not work. And we can we can do two things. We can get really frustrated about it and, like, you know, kind of, like, be upset. Or we could just say, you know what, whatever is going to work out, the things are just going to work out the way they need to work out. And that, that, that it's going to be fine anyway, either way. You know what I mean? So that's, that's also kind of like the Mercury retrograde sort of lessons for us too, is for us to learn how to kind of like, not always feel like we need to be in control of every single thing that happens to us or every single thing, um, you know, that we want to do is kind of like, sometimes you just kind of let, let it, let things ride, you know? Yeah, you do. I do. I I am so appreciative of you in in this episode, kind of like debunking some of the myths that people hear mm. when it comes to astrology and or what people think it is because they just aren't familiar with it. Mm. Um. So yeah, I hope that is one takeaway that people have listening to this. Yeah, don't don't be scared of Mercury retrograde. Um, like I said, Mercury gets the bad the bad rap because it's a communication planet, and you know things tend to go a little bit haywire around a Mercury retrograde, and it happens about three times a year. So that's why you know people always get panicked. Oh, you know Mercury retrograde, but there's a lot of good stuff that can come out of Mercury retrograde. I mean, shit, I was born during one, so <laughs> I'm oh. doing okay. <laughs> I'm doing fine. So th- yeah. So when you went back and like, do you just knew the placements from your birth chart? You were able to tell that. Yeah. So in your birth chart, it'll tell you if you have retrograde planets. Um. So like Mercury is not a, the only planet. Like Venus retrograde. As a matter of fact, next mm-hmm. year, uh, twenty twenty, all the planets are going to retrograde. Um, at some point or another next year, Mars is going to oh. retrograde. Venus is going to retrograde. I thought you were going to say they were going to all retrograde at the same time. No, 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 no. Thank God. Oh, God, no. No, I um, know we had, it was like a period, was it this year or last year where it was like six planets were in retrograde? Yeah, that was, that was 20, 2018, I think it was. So, yeah, yeah so this, it's going to happen again in 2020. Um, we're going to have like, yeah, six, seven planets retrograde. The only, the only things that don't retrograde are the sun and the moon, but everybody else does. So, so I have another question that I've never asked, mm-hmm. and I just thought about it because you said 2020, mm-hmm. because it is a leap year next year. Does that do anything different with, like, does that skew things anyway? No, uh, or just because no. it's just an extra day, so it's whatever. Yeah, no, no, no. This, this, it's not. Um, not that I know of. Maybe I don't know. Maybe another astrologer might have a different take on it, but I don't. I don't. I've never heard of like leap years affecting anything in particular. Got it. Okay. So as people are starting to make their plans for 2020, um, what is like a few tips that you would give someone and how they could use astrology to help them 
kind of manifest some of the goals that they want to accomplish next year? I think that's a great question. So one of the things that I've been finding myself talking about a lot with my clients is just this idea of like, like personal legacy, you know, like what, Mm. what is it that you want to be recognized for? And not just, not just in terms of recognition, but it's kind of like, how do you define success? You know, because I think that the definition of success and like achievement, um, we've been kind of operating under this very narrow and sort of like linear definition. And what we've been finding is that a lot of people, you know, like it doesn't work for everybody. You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't work or you have people who have like a serious advantage and, you know, are trying to keep people from, you know, reaching success and, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of like 2020 is like a a, uh, a year where we're really going to be asked to really redefine what success means to us collectively and on a personal level. And so one of the things that I've been thinking about in, in regards to that, so Jupiter, our, our ruling planet um, for, Sagitt- mm-hmm. for Sagittarians and, and um, Pisces too, but uh, Jupiter, you know, we, we've had Jupiter and Sagittarius for like the past year. Um, which has brought us, know, you know, it's different. About to leave us. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like so sad for it to go because this this only happens every 12 years. So, mm-hmm. um, Jupiter is going to be moving into Capricorn on December 2nd. And it's going to stay there for a full year. So, Jupiter and Capricorn is a very weird energy because Jupiter is about abundance and like you know, let's party and have a good time and you know, generosity and all that kind of stuff. Whereas Capricorn is very like reserved and cautious and practical and like, you know, let's, you know, we only follow the rules. So having that planet of like abundance in the plant in the sign that has to do with like, you know, con- you know, being conservative and cautious and, and um, disciplined, it's, it's going to really ask that we um, think about like the way in which we're making money and sort of like the relationship and like mm. our beliefs about money. You know, and because, you know, scarcity, this idea like scarcity and like, oh, you're just not enough in the the world, you know, you know, it's just (laughs) just a constant barrage of like fear, fear, scarcity, fear, scarcity. And so that's not to say that there aren't real economical problems in the world and that there aren't um, that there isn't a grave imbalance in terms of like how we how how resources are handled in the world. But it is saying that in terms of like connecting to that and and being in a place of like abundance and in alignment with our purpose it's really going to ask us to look beyond than just the paycheck you know look beyond yeah. and just making the money and seeing that if we allow ourselves to take a leap of faith because that's also very jupiter taking some leaps of faith and going after something that resonates with us like on a more soulful sort of spiritual level that the money will find us, that the money will follow us as opposed to us coming from this place of like, oh, you know, I really want to do this and I really want to do that, but I can't make money off of that. Or I really want to do this Mm -hmm. and I really want to do that, but, you know, I got these bills to pay. So I'm just going to stay in this soul sucking job until, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of moving away from that energy and moving more into recognizing that what we have in our bank accounts or what we don't is not our, def- like, it's not the thing that defines us at the end of the day. Yes, money is great. Money is nice. I love money just as much as anybody else do. I love does. money too. <laughs> <laughs> but I also recognize that it's not something that is, is, is essentially when I think about like what it means to be a human being that is also connected to the divine, that it's, it's not something that's going to essentially like, ruin me either you know what I mean and so knowing that it allows me to take some risks in terms of like doing things that I really want to do trusting that what I need is going to be provided to me because I recognize that I'm on my path and I'm answering my calling and I'm following my true purpose and so that's the kind of that's the kind of energy that I really would like to see people going into 2020 with of just recognizing like they don't have to be slaves to the system and that even though, yes, there's very real and very, um, there's very real problems in the world and there's very, you know, real things that need to be addressed, that it's not just about like survival, that we, it's, it's also about thriving too. I love that. I, I really do love that. 
the year. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. I'm ready for 2020. <laughs> I, I, I think that is, yeah, I think that is good for people. Like, you know, I I, I was sitting here like um, starting because I, I do a vision board every year. And so I pulled out, like I noticed the last few years um, when I've gone because I host it for a few friends and when I would just show up and flip it through magazines and letting that dictate it I wasn't very successful and so in the last few the last two years I think I had came with a notebook and I had like themes and I had like goals written under each theme so I came with a mission to the party to be like this is what I'm this is what I'm looking for now this is what I want to put on my board versus just flipping through like oh yeah that's cute yeah mm -hmm, I'm gonna put this on here (laughs) that was way more intentional about Mm -hmm. my board Mm -hmm. and I've Mm -hmm. had greater success in the things that I accomplished throughout those years so yeah yeah I I received everything you just said (laughs) no no I think that's great and I think you know I definitely would encourage people to like definitely like move with intention, you know, you know, I mean, like I said, the majority of the planets are going to be retrograde next year. Um, not all at once, but it is going to be kind of like a back to back to back kind of thing. And so whenever we have that many planets retrograde all at once, it's never a time of like jumping head first into something, but more about kind of reevaluating where you are and like what's important to you. And then planting the seeds, you know, and being intentional with the actions that you do take so that you can manifest or kind of bring your plans or your vision to life. And, you know, I would say, you know, with that, you know, just reminding people like to to be patient with themselves and to be patient with the process and to just, you know, in terms of that intent, just making sure that they're not buying too much into this idea of like fear and scarcity, because with us having um, this Republican, uh, you know, government, you know, they are going to try, they are, they're going to try it, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, they've already, I mean, they already been trying it, you know what I mean? Like they've already been yes, planting yes. and sowing those seeds of fear and, and, you know, like, oh my, you know, end of the world kind of stuff. And I'm just saying like, you know, be, you know, be aware, be prepared, you know, um, but also, you know, don't lose faith and don't lose hope either. I think that is the perfect way to end on. <laughs> don't yes. lose faith. Um, so you you're familiar. We do the breakdown. I'm gonna say one word. Okay. You say the first thing that comes to mind. All right. All right. Let's see how aligned we were because I did these before. <laughs> um, love, romance, writing, love, technology. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. <laughs> C- communication. Clear. Stars. On fire. <laughs> Mercury. Oh, Mercury. Oh, now I'm thinking about it. Um, <laughs> curiosity. And last one, 2020. Uh, <laughs> 2020. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you heard it from her first. <laughs> 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 that's funny <laughs> well if you could tell everyone <laughs> where they can find you on social media where they can pick up your books what's new what's next sure um so if you want to book a session with me or just find out more about me my work read my horoscopes you can find me at mylifecreated.com um, I also write the daily horoscopes and monthly horoscopes for bustle.com. And um, I have a book out called Astrology for Happiness and Success. That's the book that we talked about earlier. And then I just released a line of adult coloring books for every sign of the Zodiac, Yay. which you can find online. They're really pretty. I love them. I'm like so in love with these things. Um, yeah, that's that's where I am. Awesome. So thank you so much. 
Thank and, you. And uh, you guys are armed with some tools for 2020. Yes, yes, so yes. So we're going to have faith. Yes, have faith. All right. Thanks, Mecca. Thank you. All right, guys, I want to thank our guest, Mecca Woods, for coming on the podcast. Be sure to follow her on social. Grab a book. Grab one of the coloring books. Makes a great stocking stuffer. If you're still looking for gifts, be sure to check out Boonies, a Black Friday shopping guide. There are some great options there. If you're looking to spend some coin this holiday season, supporting Black-owned businesses, okay? And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or any app that you listen to your favorite podcast on. Don't forget to leave those reviews too. You just might hear your review on the next episode. Follow us on all social media. Share the episode with those you love, those you don't love, those you fucking hate. I don't make those pretty images for nothing, okay? Have a dope ass week. If you're celebrating Thanksgiving, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening. And remember, the ratchet in me always honors the ratchet in you. Until next time.